Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today I thought we would do something just a little bit different. I think it's about time to do another painting using only the palette knife. Should be a challenge, and I think you'll really enjoy seeing how it's done. And of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now I'm gonna mix together a very soft purple color, maybe a little more white into that. And I also did a quick sketch with the palette knife. <laughs> there we go. I'm just gonna slap this in and mush it around. If you guys have seen my other palette knife videos, you kind of have an idea of how I like to do this. I like to press really hard. This is a good knife because it bends. It's actually tapered. You probably can't tell until you get one in your hands, but you'll see that the blade is tapered so that it doesn't bend here at the handle. It bends kind of in the middle, which is good stuff. Keeps your fingers clean and allow, allows you to really mush this in. And I'll kind of tell you more about the palette knife as we go, you know, kind of give you some of my thoughts on how to use it. There we go. Nice. Now I do have a bit of clear gel here, which I did not put on the canvas, which I am going to work into the paint when I need to. There. If it just feels like it's not covering. So anyways, here you go. If you'd rather do the, the background with the brush and then try to texturize it, you can, but I'm just for the sake of, of this painting, I'm gonna, just going to do the whole thing with the palette knife. So there we go. Now I'm going to just scrape off this area right here toward the horizon in the middle of the painting. I'm just going to scrape this area off. Okay, so that leaves just the stain on the canvas. Now I've got a little bit of tinted white, tinted with some yellow. Scoop that up. I'm going to add a glow back here. Yellow and purple, obviously, you guys know, makes brown. Not bad, but I'd rather not have a lot of brown back here, if you know what I mean. So. I'm gonna, that's why I scraped it. I'm gonna be a little bit extra careful to just blend it in without creating mud. I don't want a lot. I just kind of want a little bit of this and I'm just gonna work it. I wipe my knife. That's kind of the secret to palette knife painting. At least I've found the biggest secret is wiping your knife off because it doesn't, it doesn't do a lot of good to have your palette knife clogged up with paint. It tends to, to make a lot better effects when it's, when it's free of paint. So there you go. So that's how I get the blend. See how it stops blending and I start getting like weird knife marks. Then I take, see, then I wipe it and it's like back to really quite nice. Alrighty, there you go. I'll work on that more later, but I just want to show you over here, back to the purple. Watch this. Just touch in a couple of trunks. Don't care if they all go the same, all go the same direction or all connected. That's not important. What is important is just, you know, kind of making them, making them feel like they fit in the painting. So you got to use a color that's just a shade or two darker than what's up there. And then maybe let them get a little softer, run out of paint as you go back. See how that pushes that light just a tiny bit further away. Cool. If you get one that's too hard, just touch it. This is where a lot of the time, you know, you would kind of tend to make your painting flat when you paint with the palette knife. So I want you to add a bunch of these little details that you might not think to add there. Now we'll scoop up a little bit of yellow and white and then maybe just a little more white on the tip of the knife. That kind of adds a little extra variety and I've already laid kind of the foundation for, you know, trees coming forward. I use the same stroke, different colors. Very simple. Okay, right up here. I am now going to add on the light. Now you can, let me show you a couple strokes you can use. You can go like this and just like break it over like you would uh, a rock or something like that. But then that's okay. We do that sometimes in palette knife painting, but a lot of the time I like to just use the point of the knife, just stick the paint down, use this as your palette, and then use the point of the knife to create little leaves. This to me is really way better because because it's just as quick and it, it looks better. It looks way nicer in my opinion. Obviously you guys do whatever you think Whatever you think works best for you, because I'm not here to tell you to do one way or the other. If you'd rather do one way, go for it. But for me, this is what I like. So give it a shot. There. And right up here. Whoa. <laughs> oh boy. There. Having fun with this yet? This is, this is a little different. I like different. I think different's kind of fun. There. Maybe a bunch of paint up in there. That's not enough paint. <laughs> there you go, yikes. You could sure get crazy doing this. So try not to get try not to get too distracted. 
don't want to make a make a big mistake. Although you know, with the palette knife painting, it's pretty easy to scrape it right off if you're not happy with it. And it really is easy. Good. A little white there. I'm gonna just repeat this over and over again. Maybe do a couple trunks, and then we'll find something else to do. All right. Well, that's probably about all we're gonna need on that side. Let's jump over to the right. Also, in there I decided to stop and just clean off my palette with just rubbed it with a paper towel. Nothing crazy. And I also prepared this nice little yellow color, which I thought is very similar to this. I thought we'd use it over here. So anyway, let's jump over here now and sort of start thinking about this side. Maybe this side's just a touch taller. There. Good. And yeah, maybe a little taller yet. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. I like it. So I'm mushing this color in, creating a bit of a, a grassy meadow. Bring it down. Don't worry, we'll play with this a little more. This is not the final product back here. I'm just kind of getting it straightened out as far as where the colors need to go. Bring that down a little farther. <laughs> there we go. So when you're doing palette knife paintings, it's good to stop every once in a while and just sort of wipe off your palette. I just scrape the paint off, wipe it with a paper towel. It's good because it, it, it really helps because otherwise you end up getting muddy. It takes a lot more space to mix with a palette knife versus a small brush. There. Okay, throwing in these big rocks. I think that's the right placement. <laughs> I guess it is now. We'll just roll with it. There. I like that. That looks good for the composition. You don't want to go dead center, but, you know, I'd, I want to make sure that we have a nice balanced composition. Very important. So that's why I kind of spend that extra minute and just make sure we got it right. A little brown. Mix that in, a little brown, real loose, and sort of work the brown in. Yeah, there we go. That's how it's going to start looking like grass. A little red in there is okay. Turned out to be more yellow than red. There's the red. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and just repeat basically the exact same idea that I had over here with the leaves. I just want to add on some, actually quite a few, make this area fairly thick. And I'm not sure if you noticed or not, but I'll tell you what I did. You see how simple this is back here? You see, I've, I kind of have an idea of where I want to go in my mind. And this is so, so useful because I didn't put any time at all, basically, into this area. Because I, I had in mind to cover it with leaves. You can always change your mind. That's okay. But at least have a basic idea of where you're headed. You don't get up and, and travel somewhere without knowing where you're going. It's the same idea when you're trying to figure out how to how to make a painting. You got to have something in your mind. You can't just jump in blind and say, here we go. <laughs> I guess you can do it, but trust me, I would do it if it worked. It doesn't work. It's worth as long as you need to take. Just take a few minutes and pre-plan your painting a little bit. Don't have to stay with your thoughts totally, but it does make a difference there. The point is, I saved myself at least at least 10 minutes of, of, see, I would have wanted to put tree trunks and, you know, it would have been, I probably would have spent another 10 minutes on that area. And I totally missed it. So that's great. Totally missed out on that. And I can put that time and energy in other, other areas. And now we'll begin working here on our water. This water is going to be fairly simple, I think. It's just basically the background. I just kind of mixed it up again. Background color, that is. I'm just going to pull straight down. I do have some of our clear gel medium that we like to use. Uh, normally in the beginning of the painting, I've got some of that worked into the water because I think it might help to get me a little bit more of a smudgy blurry effect, which will be good for reflections. Back here, I'm going to rub really hard. Now, remember, we're using oil paints. And the thing about oil paints is you can glop on a lot of texture, which is good. But why would you want to put a lot of texture everywhere when you could use it to your advantage by just putting it in areas that you want to draw a lot of interest to or areas that are in the foreground you want to seem, want them to seem like they're detailed. So use the texture for that. And what you can do back here is really mush it flat. See that? Okay, so it, this is looking a little bit well, a little bit plain. So I'm going to come in here with some of our rock color. And I'm going to sneak some of the rock color back in there. Help to def define the shoreline just enough. 
Good. See how you can work things like that. Then right over here, I'll just underpaint with this whole thing, grabbing a little bit of paint, pulling down that collar to create reflections. Just that easy. Now over here, what we'll do is just like we do in a normal painting. I'll take this area and underpaint it with a little, little brown, a little black. These are where we're gonna have our falls. So these are obviously the water's a little thin. These are probably rocks. There you go. <laughs> See, it's just like we always do. Don't be afraid of the palette knife paintings. They're a lot of fun. They can teach you how to be really, really good with color and stuff. Cause you gotta, gotta pay a little more attention to the color. There. Now I'm just adding a little extra color here to the foreground. You see, I started on some rocks and just sort of, I don't know, I'm just trying to play around here, getting at least the bulk of the painting blocked in, because I think that'll help us a lot. I really do, because it'll make it easier to see what, what I'm doing, number one. Things will just, they'll sort of start making more sense, if you know what I mean. There. And so all I'm doing is blocking and underpainting, and you guys know about this. You guys know that I like to put, and I always encourage you guys to put detail and, more importantly, a lot of you know, proper color changes in your, in your underpainting. Put some depth in there. Get some depth right in your underpaintings because then when you go to highlight, well, <laughs> you'll have a, you'll have an, an extremely beautiful, beautiful painting because the highlights will be nice, the underpainting will be nice, the whole thing just works together for you. And that's what we want. We want the whole painting working together. Okay, so, with that thought in mind, maybe I want a slightly brighter area right down here, so I, I underpaint with a brighter color. There. You know, I can still highlight with kind of a green, but I can also use gold colors as well. This isn't the highlight, though. This is just still the underpainting, although it looks like highlight. We can go a lot brighter than that. Right on top, and it'll look just, just right. <laughs> so there you go. This is all it takes. It's a lot of fun, using a lot of color. You can see, look at my palette. I'm gonna have to stop and clean it off again pretty soon. There. I'm not gonna add any uh, medium, none of that clear gel in this part, because I don't think it would help because we wanna, wanna get a little more detail in this area. I don't want a soft blend here. In the water, I did want a soft blend, so it worked pretty well. But over here, I think I'm gonna leave it out. Now I'm gonna move forward here with some more grass. I've gone with a slightly calmer color than I just touched a little on the background, so I did a slightly calmer color than that. And also, this area I scraped off. There. Now, when you get down here into, into this area, this is going to be the dirt, so you want, you want to make sure you leave that showing. <laughs> Don't want to cover it up. The more layers of paint you build up, the worse. At least in, in this little area. Maybe not always. This is a knife painting, so the rules are just a little different. There. Okay. Now maybe we can, you see, it's very difficult to get in here and just do a ton of blades of grass. So instead, what you can do is just mush it on like this and then kind of bounce your blade up and down lightly. And that creates kind of a broken texture on the top. See that? There are other ways to make grass with a palette knife that work really well too, but this is just the one I'm gonna use right now. And then of course you can, and we will in the foreground here, you can, just take it and kind of scrape into it a little, drag up some of that paint. See, I don't want to cut through to the white canvas. I just want to drag up a little bit of the paint to create the feeling of some grass like you would with a liner brush. There. Good. Now I'm going to go ahead and just lay on a little bit of highlight here. Make this kind of, kind of look like it's running, running water, which is obviously what we want it to look like. I did spend just a second with the color here and just pulled straight down just with the, the same color we've been using in the water. But I, I like the idea of underpainting here with the sand color because if you ever looked at water up close, you know, the water in the background is kind of reflecting like a mirror, but the water at your feet you can see right down with very, very little obstruction. So that's the way I like to paint it because it's just the way it is. There. So in my, in my mind here, the way I'm kind of doing this is I'm going to do a little bit more of a shimmer on the left-hand side and then on the right-hand side as it goes across, it's going to be a little bit more, well, a little more see-through for you. There. Good. Now you can spend a little time here, and I'm going to, just making this smooth because it takes a little extra, 
extra minute or two to get this thing smooth with the palette knife, remember? I wiped the knife and, and then that's how you blend. That way it didn't get so smudgy and it's a little more clean that way. Not so muddy. I guess palette knives could get muddy if you don't keep them clean, wiped off. Otherwise, you know, it just ends up swishing the color around. This way it blends the color like a brush would. Good. Oh, that's pretty. And let me grab a purple again. Ah, this purple looks like it has a little more red to it. I wonder if, I think that could be kind of cool. There, you see, I just took a couple seconds here and I added a flower or two. Maybe we want one over the water like that. I thought that was kind of fun. I just dabbed them on with the knife. Go back here to the white and just keep, keep layering this on. There. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.